a slow it was a sl a slow climb into something that you didn't expect or know what to do with it's kind of like a 24 7 type of a thing where you're constantly going back and forth in your head trying to figure out what's wrong what do we need to do how do we do it we thought it was the end we we, we could not have imagined that, that she would have achieved what she has The doctor had told me previously that I will not, not be able to have children. So his arrival was just such a, oh my gosh, moment for us. The nurse brought him into our room and Joe and I look at each other, we're like, what do we do? <laughs> I remember, we're like, what do we do? And of course, you get the smell of a newborn baby. It's, it, was, um, it was just awesome, it was wonderful. You know, all parents, you start where you want your kid to go to Harvard, all these kinds of things. When you really think about it, you want your child to be happy, be happy with themselves. We wanted him to have just that typical life of a kid. I remember her withdrawing. Uh, she began to develop her own language. And that's really when I began to see a difference in her uh, behavior. I think by first grade, we were like, Eli is different from other kids. When she started, she was, she, she really would crawl under a chair in a school rather than, rather than look at you in the eye. She was that frightened. She was that, that defeated. By fifth grade, Eli was a mess. He was sad. He was depressed. He was angry. He was raging. It, and we knew he wasn't doing well in school. He would rub his fingers under right. his desk till all his fingers were bleeding. Right. And then where he had like put band-aid pads yeah. on him. It was, that's like, this is so serious. Yeah. And Lucy, my daughter, had a nervous breakdown. Had a terrible, terrible time. One day the school bus came home, but Jerice wasn't on it. And I said, what, what do you mean she's not on it? You know, I couldn't even think. Her whole life up until then had been just one failure after another. I mean, it was like nothing worked. You know. I mean, we just really saw it. If we didn't make a change now, at fifth, end of fifth grade, his life was over. That's really how we saw it. Eli's life would be over. And we were lucky enough to find Cove immediately and came here. And it was, it was at that point in our, you know, our traverse through all these, all these issues where we thought this was the worst time, that, worst thing that ever happened to us. And we didn't realize that when we came here, it was actually the best thing that, that could have happened to us. When I first walked in here, I was kind of set back a little bit because there's a lot of kids in here and they're not typical kids. So you kind of get a little awestruck. But then after thinking about it for a little while, I said, this is my son. Your son. He belongs here right. with these children. Yes. This is his setting. It starts out with every adult in this building, whether it's a teacher or support staff or Jill at the front desk, they all get these kids and they all accept them and don't judge them. And that's a really wonderful environment to come into when you're a child who struggles. Well, in my case, I, I, I'm an architect, so it, it, it's the place that I try to, to to make, put at the disposal of Cove. And what we tried to do is to turn it into a, a building that, that would express the spirit that, that, we, that we feel Cove has. It's a place to celebrate the achievements of these kids. But I specifically remember driving up to the end of this driveway and thinking, there's something peaceful about a tree-lined street, open windows, there's natural light here, and it reflected all the artwork that people could see on the walls the activities that the kids were involved in. There was real laughter here. Kids were happy. And I just thought, this has just got to be the place where Jerice needs to be until she doesn't need to be here anymore. What Cove did was it relaxed him so he could start being more himself. We could see more of Eli, you know, his true self when he was here because the stressors of everyday life in the school. 
were normalized. A lot of these kids, they come in as a browbeat. Right. They're coming from a school where they were an outcast. Right. They weren't learning. They're walking around with their heads down. And they come here and their heads start coming up. Yeah, that's they the get that comfort thing. level. Yes. And then when they're feeling good, you could absorb an education. Right. You could learn. Jarese has to travel an hour and a half from home, both going and coming to school. And I have to say she is a champion because for six years, every day at 5 a.m., excited about school, homework completed, clothes ready, ready for breakfast, just like clockwork, still with the level of excitement. He didn't want to go to school before. No. This Gosh. kid's dressed with his yeah. little backpack 15 yeah. minutes early waiting for that yes. bus. And, and at the end of the day, if there's something going on at school, he, I said, why don't we just get you a bed here? <laughs> he really enjoys school. He loves school. He's growing, you know, baby steps, but they're growing to a point where he'll be self-sufficient in life. Teresa's excited. She's been to colleges, and she's doing her college tours now. And we're going to decide in the next couple of months if she'll stay here and go to community college for a year, just so she'll have some kind of introduction, or she'll go to four-year college. He likes going to college. <laughs> Yay. Lucy's 27 now. She's she's way beyond school, but she's but she's mainstreamed. She, you know, she's she's a, she's she's got a slot. She's, there's a place for her, because because she works. You know, she she works in society, and she learned to do that. She started to learn to do that here. Eli's high school graduation is going to be it's just unbelievable. We didn't think we'd be there, and we're here. I think it'll be really hard for him, and that makes me nervous, too. But I think he can do it. He knows how to use his strategies. He knows how to use his resources. He's really good at that. He's really good at that. He's so independent on that. Like, I can't believe it. It's going. The city needs this. There is a population here which is especially in need of, of, of some special help. In order, to, in order to save these kids, save these families. And Co that's what COVID does. These students that leave out of here, they're prepared to go out into the world at whatever level that they leave here and reach a level of independence and success. Cole wants to know when you leave here, you're not just finished with high school or grammar school, even if they go back to their home school. You're moving forward, and that, that was important to me. I don't cry like this except when I'm in this building, I'm just saying. I could talk about this to my friends without shedding a tear. I come here and I'm like, oh. what do you do? Because Cove saved my son. Cove helped me save my son. This is everything to me. This building, this place, these people. They're everything. It's, it's, it's saved us. It saved him, it saved us.